for coming to my lecture style. I'll be presenting the uh, world premiere piece called Second Portal Cry, Opus 96 by composer Dr. Johan N. W. King. So for intro introduction, I'll be talking about who the composer is and what Tokai is, and I'm going to continue to analyze this piece, and we're going to hear the composer's perspective from Dr. King, and we'll have the performance, and I'll end with the question and answers. So who is Dr. Johan M. H. Kim? His full name is Johan Myung-Hwan Kim. He's Korean. He was born in 1959 in Seoul, South Korea. He actually graduated from dental school of Seoul National University. I don't know if you know that's the, the top university in Korea and it's very hard to get in, but uh, he graduated from dental school in 1984. However, he has like really passionate about music and he has the talent for music. So he decided to go study abroad in Vienna where he pursued his diploma and master of competition at Hochschule of Vienna. That's also called University of Music and Performing Arts in 1991. And he comes back to Korea and he teaches several universities. And he moved back to America and he pursues another degree. It's called Master of Divinity and DMA of Composition and Voice at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, which is in Louisville, Kentucky. That's happened 2007, and DMA he pursued in 2011. He is well acknowledged as a, a talented composer while he was in Vienna. He was awarded Alban Berg Scholarship in Austria two years, in 1989 and 1990. He also awarded at the International String Quartet Competition in 1990. That was for celebrating 200th anniversary of Mozart that in Austria. He had achievement scholarship at Wiener Music Hochschule in 1992. Also, he had a project scholarship in Vienna by the city of Vienna in 1992. As I mentioned, he is uh, taught at several universities in Korea, such as Cheonan University, Anyang University, and Gyeongwon University. And he also took a role as a jump faculty of music theory at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. But now, currently, he is holding a job as professor of church music at Cambodia, Presbyterian Theological Institute, since 2016. He is very well known in Korea as a founder of New Praise Society since 2001, and that also that society holds the festival called the International Youth Hymn Festival. Now it's known as Global New Praise Video Festival. It uh, started since 2001. This Global New Praise Video Festival uh, is actually the the route that I got to know composer Kim because. This festival happens once a year and prize the kids, whoever competes in the festival and gives kids opportunity to perform in big, bigger stages such as Carnegie Hall or Kennedy Center. So when I was in middle school, uh, one of my friends had to play in Carnegie Hall during the festival. So I really wanted to uh, learn his music and uh, get into the festival, but I was in Mongolia so I couldn't do that. But that's how I got to know his music and this festival. So the Global, Global New Praise Video Festival had over 500 participants from 70 different cities last year. That's the cities in the map. So now I want to talk about what is the guide. So my, as you can see in the program, this call, this piece called Shakun for Dog Guide. And this dog guide actually is not in Korea. This is Cambodia. So I had to learn what this is this animal is, and this is one of the species of gecko. And in English, it's called tokei gecko. It's quite similar. So in English, it's, uh, the name came from how it cries. So it's very important for this music because it cries in seconds of the descending minor sixth interval. Whew, I gotta speak a little bit slowly. <laughs> okay. And this animal lives uh, in tropical rainforest areas. So actually, I've never seen it in person. And Dr. 
Dr. Kim hadn't, hadn't seen this in person until he moved to Cambodia. So he heard this random sound in every night. So he figured that's just random machine making a sound outside. But he moved place in Cambodia and then he heard the sound again. So he figured that, oh, it's not a machine. Maybe it's a creature. And then he found out this was this was this this creature making a sound. So I'm gonna let you listen to the recording that he uh, recorded during the night. He had to put the recorder outside and hope the best token cries at that night. So he caught this recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I'm gonna, I want to play this 15 seconds recording again, but I want you to look at the first line of the shakton, it begins with that motive. So I want to see how similar those intervals and matches those perfectly. Triple 
like kind of rhythmic because it's, the shuffle it keeps repeating the character. Uh, within the theme, it has 39 variations, so total it repeats 40 times in the shuffle. And if we look at the variation one, um, uh, the toke, toke, I'm going to call it toke in English, it's toke gecko. So toke gives us the, still the interval descending down, but Dr. Kim creates the harmonic, the bass line. It's descending half steps, but it's not just half step lining going down, it also has the harmonic structure, which is in G, G minor, an F sharp augmented chord, F augmented chord, E augmented chord, so on. So we can easily find that he's using a lot of augmented chord. That's really important for Dr. Kim's piece because it's related to the bell harmony that I'm going to talk about now. So what is bell harmony? <laughs> so it's the harmony that Dr. Kurt Anton Huber um, established. And he was a composer and physician and professor at Vienna University, the Hochschule of Vienna that Dr. Kim studied. So Dr. Kim learned this theory directly from Dr. Weber. Um, this bell harmony is not a tonal harmony, but tonal harmony. So I can easily say that it's in between, so, which uh, opens a lot of doors to the composer to create much more fuller harmonic structures. Um, this formula down here, Yes, there is a lot of music, but that's what Dr. Whoever established, and this is very awesome achievement in his life. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more about um, uh, bell harmony. That uh, Dr. Kim, Dr. Johan Kim, is published the bell harmony book in 2004, and this was really special because it was printed with the support of the Ministry for Education, Science, and Cultural Affairs in Vienna. So there's letters from Dr. Whoever, like directly to him, how he was, you know, honored that he, one of his students, is establishing and developing on his theory. Also, the Vienna government was appreciating Dr. Kim that he was doing that for Dr. Whoever. So it can easily found with the ISM BN number, and this is the bell harmony. So Dr. Whoever created three types of bell harmony, which is type 1, type 2, and type 3. However, you, Dr. Johan Kim created his own type 0, which he uses quite often in Shakon of Tokai. So I want to talk about it. You can kind of look at the chord, and I divide it with the blue color. So Dr. Kim creates this zero type E flat chord, which is combined two chords. It's kind of easy to understand if we can approach that way. So E flat plus A4, which means A chord with the suspension. It's not, it's not resolved down yet. So um, also the one F, one type F chord is combined of F minor and B major. Two type C chord is C plus D flat augmented. And there's really specific rule that every inversion has to be happen in first inversion, the bottom chord I'm talking about, and it has to be in specific place to create the bell sound. So I'm going to ask Dr. Kim to play three chords. <laughs> It's pleasant to hear the chords. 
So that's the theory that Dr. Kim is using in his music. And this is the inversion. So you can use the chord inverted and also in major form or melody used. How Dr. Kim uses bell harmony in his music? There are several ways they can approach music with this bell harmony. Sometimes he use solely bell harmony composition. So it's not traditional Western harmony at all, but solely bell harmony. And sometimes he mix the bell harmony with the traditional harmony. And he uses bell harmony as some crucial point in otherwise traditional harmony ambience. So this number three will be the case for this chakram for toke. And he uses it when he needs a sound that transcends traditional tonality but still maintains tonal standard. Sometimes he regards bell harmony as such as connect tonal music and atonal music. Like I said, it can be like in between tonal and atonal or has both characteristics. I want to point out some examples of, of in the, the piece that I will be performing very soon. This is measure 45 and there is an example of a hidden bell harmony because it's not in the chord like Dr. Sami Kim played or it's in the order. So here we can see that it, uh, he treats this one with the kind of like 12 tone technique. It doesn't have to be the order but the, all the notes of zero type F chord is in there. Another example, measure 47. So it has the zero type D flat chord there, but this this one actually is missing G, which is top second note. And he said, Dr. King says it's another way to hide bell harmony for artistic purpose because it creates the ambiguous color. So last example I want to talk about uh, it's uh, nearly the last last part section of the piece. We have the 1C chord going into C minor and we have 0 type C chord going to F minor 7. So this shows us that he uses bell harmony chords in the cadence kind of progressions and the last one, especially this works as a plagal cadence. So um, he's showing that this, uh, there's progressions how he's using bell harmony that's resolving down into the conventional harmony. If you want to learn more about the bell harmony, because I have poor um, you know, explanation of the great theory, uh, there's QR code on the program that you have, so you can visit and uh, you can listen to this English and Portuguese lecture on this. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about citation of Ocam Ocam Emmanuel in this piece. Uh, he uses uh, this famous Ocam Ocam Emmanuel melody into the chakram, so he melts the melody into the piece because there's reasons. Because he says there's common denominator. It shares close intervallic relationship through inversion. For example, that the bottom line is the first measure of the piece and the top line is measure 161. That's the melody of the Okam Okam Emmanuel. And if I reverse the, in, the pitches down, it creates major 6 and minor 6 inverse. And if we look at the second one, it's exactly the same as our first interval of the piece. So um, Dr. Kim found that there is closer, closer relationship, so he decided to use the citation of Okam Okam Emmanuel. Also, there's another reason that he used it because he wanted to share the spiritual, spiritual message. He is Christian and in the Bible, he quotes Romans 8, 8, 19. In the program notes, also when I was interviewing him, he mentioned it. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. So he thinks the took his crime, it's he is waiting on Jesus to be revealed because he promised the second second coming through the resurrection. I want to talk about a little bit more on resurrection because the Tokyo's lonely cry begins and leads the music. However, it, it goes up to climax around measure 152 and it goes to up to three fourths at at the purple part and 
actually that sounds like it's done because you know, T is indicating that at the E flat chord. However, the piano left, left, sorry, left hand, piano left hand rise up in E major. So from G minor, it's right back to E flat major, which also has the sixth the relations. However, this uh, piano line goes into major and very soft and mellow and gentle melody. So this piece concludes in very peaceful mode, which uh, Dr. Kim is indicating the death, but it's not the end for Christians. It goes into the resurrected and we have eternal life in the peace. So he's representing that in the peace, uh, at the end of the peace. So now I want to uh, invite Dr. Kim here. It's kind of miracle that I can have composer uh, that I'm working on the piece with me. He's actually leaving to Cambodia tomorrow morning. So this is the last day that he's here. So I'm very thankful that I could do this on today. So here's Dr. Kim.
to use this in many various, various ways, I think, how to use this bell harmony uh, for the artistry of music and also for, for God's glory as well. So it has 12 uh, small pieces and then it uh, was uh, commissioned by a Korean pianist and then it uh, was premiered by her in 2000. Ninety-nine, <laughs> so <laughs> and then these are the, uh, the children's song, children's song, uh, Cambodian children's song, but I uh, uh, arranged it for piano. Uh, unfortunately, Cambodia, as you might know, uh, killing field, right? Some two million people have been killed, uh, so it's kind of genocide. Uh, this is a very specific case because all other genocides are done by other foreigners, but it is done by uh, its own people. Can you imagine? Yeah, it's so uh, <coughs> painful. Uh, so they don't know what the artistic piano is, something like that. So I arranged it for piano, and some of uh, Cambodian teachers love this very much. Uh, so I, uh, somehow I to have that, so it's enough for me to give this, to give this to, to Professor. Uh, professor. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Corey. Thank you.
Recently, uh, maybe uh, you might uh, uh, never heard of his name, uh, Toshiro Mayuzumi, as a Japanese composer. Uh, maybe some oh, amazing. Yeah. He wrote actually uh, symphonies. Uh, one of uh, symphonies is a Nirvana symphony, and in that symphony, he uses the term of campanology. Campanology one, campanology two. So that piece is pretty much the best piece that uh, try to uh, mimic the sound of bell. But unfortunately, he didn't have this magic formula <laughs> done by, as I started by uh, uh, Dr. Kurt Atom Pueba. But uh, other than that, you, 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 you name uh, like, you know, uh, Hachaturian, he uses real bell in his uh, uh, symphony. And also uh, Mozart. Uh, so that is my my just reading into <laughs> in, in his famous um, uh, dissonant quartet. Okay, in few in just two measures, he used all the twelve tones. Uh, somehow uh, it uh, it, it um, maybe pointing to pointing to the, uh, uh, maybe the dissonant harmony. Somehow related to that. Yeah, so will that be an uh, answer? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? No? So, thank you so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <Okay. laughs> uh, thank you so much. This uh, is actually my last solo recital as a uh, soloist in the whole recital program because I'll be performing Barbara Concerto with the UKS, so but I'll not have this intimate time with my okay. colleagues. So I want to appreciate, uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, Professor Mason for your awesome teachings and mentorship. He is really number one teacher who has most knowledgeable about music or the violin. He has all the answers whenever I ask him. He <laughs> even tells me things that I didn't even ask. So <laughs> I'm, learning, I'm learning a lot. So mm -hmm. I really thank you, Professor Mason, taking me as your student. And I'm really sad when I had to leave you. And <laughs> thank you. And I really thank my committee members, Dr. Wu and Dr. Bernard. Thank you for your time being here. And thank you for all the advices and your support throughout this journey of TMA. And I thank all the friends and colleagues. Thank you so much. I didn't expect to see many faces here. So I really appreciate your presence here. I thank my family, my brother, and my OK <laughs> sister-in-law. And thank you. Thank you so much for your support and love all the time. I especially thank Dr. Osman.
pretty. I'm playing of notes to play, but for the piano part, I can compete. So I think for her, she really learned this so quickly. So I'm so proud of her. And thank you so much for playing this to me. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Kim, for being here. And his wife is also here, Mrs. Kim. Thank you. He's, she's also a pianist. So thank you for your presence. And there are some people watching over Zoom. So thank you. So I have a special encore if you all want. I have a piece prepared with Sandy hey. that one of his originals oh, okay. kind of surprise for him. So I'll conclude uh, with this song. Thank you so much.